in a rolling report is a parameter. It's attached. If uh, anyone has any questions. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Tepper, educational programs. Yes, we have a few teacher leaders here this evening to talk about new courses and um, approval for new courses and also for some textbooks. And at the conclusion of that presentation, we will have Mrs. Lammer and Ms. Riebel uh, give an overview on the transformation of libraries and especially here at Greater Lake Health. So I would like to start off by turning it over to Mr. Grant. This year, as part of the curriculum cycle, we determined within the science department which courses needed new textbooks. And there were three courses that we decided that they needed the textbooks. The first one was our chemistry books, which were over 10 years old. But the teachers really enjoyed using those books and thought they were great resources for the students. So they moved on to the new edition of that book, and that is what they requested. And we've set up an online training for the online resources, which are a great supplement to this. We then moved on and looked at the AP Chemistry. Once again, it was over 10 years old. Mr. Ria, our AP Chemistry teacher, reviewed three different textbooks, narrowed it down, and this is the book that he chose. And one of the things that he really liked was there were some online resources that will allow students to do the chemistry problems, and then it will give them feedback online as to how they're doing with that work. So that will enable them a greater feedback, and once again, we have an online training set up for that material as well. And the last book is The Anatomy and Physiology. This is the book that Jen Levine will be using in her anatomy courses. And it's a dual enrollment course. And one of the things that she tried to do was find a book that would coordinate with that dual enrollment course, both at the collegiate level and here at the high school. And then this also, once again, with all the others, has the online resources that we're setting up training for. So these are the three new textbooks that we will be using the next year within the science department. And now I'm going to turn it over to Megan Paremka. One of the things we, that we looked at doing was adding a new course this year. And Megan is the co-science teacher leader. And we talked within our department and have been talking with Dr. Keppert about it. And we had two science teachers who were very interested in giving up two weeks of their summer to go away, receive eight hours of training a day, and then about four to five hours of coursework a night so that they could teach this course next year. So it was great that we had two teachers interested. And now Megan will talk to you about the course. Um, so we are really excited about this course. It's a project, the Eat Away course. It's called Principles of Biomedical Science. Um, I'm Heather, you're passing around right now uh, just a brief course summary. This course is jam packed full of good stuff. I think it's going to be a really, really fun course for students. It starts off with the death of a fictitious character named Anna. And students will be part of a crime scene investigation team, and they have to figure out what happened to her. So uh, the course opens, you can see it's divided into six units. The course opens with um, like evidence collection. So students are looking at uh, hair samples, fingerprints, blood samples, shoe prints. Uh, I think that they actually do an experiment during unit one where they look at how ambient temperatures affect the cooling rate of the body. Um, they look at blood stain patterns, so lots of really cool stuff, especially if kids are interested in all those CSI shows that we know are so popular right now. I think that they're really going to uh, think that that unit is pretty cool. Unit 2 focuses on diabetes. Uh, this is where, as I look through um, the, the lengthier description of the course, it looks like this unit focuses a whole lot on homeostasis and how the body tries to maintain stable internal conditions. Um, it also looks like it focuses a lot on biochemistry. So it will actually be um, a nice kind of reinforcement of what we do in biology and an enrichment of what we do in biology as well. And, and students who are taking this course uh, will either be concurrently taking biology or have already completed biology. Unit three, that's the sickle cell anemia unit. That looks to me like it's a genetics unit. So uh, it focuses on molecular genetics, looking at how DNA is expressed to make proteins. It looks at the inheritance of sickle cell or the sickle cell trait through a family. Uh, it looks at cell division and how chromosomes are passed from one cell uh, to the next uh, generation, basically, or one generation to the next generation. Unit four focuses on the heart. Uh, so this is where students are gonna look at the cardiovascular system 
the anatomy and physiology of the cardiovascular system. I believe this unit includes a dissection of a sheep's heart. Uh, unit five is an infectious disease unit. So students are gonna learn about transmission of bacteria. They'll learn how to isolate bacteria and identify bacteria. They'll be looking at the immune system, the anatomy and physiology of the immune system. And then unit six is called post-mortem. So this is where students get to pull it all together. Uh, this is the culminating unit. They get to um, look at the interconnections of body systems. They get to look at all of these themes that we look at in biology, like homeostasis, how structure equals function, um, the body systems and how they're all related and how if something goes one, or if something goes wrong in one, how it kind of has a ripple effect on the others. Um, but it's, it's really a hands-on course. There's a lot of lab work involved. There's a lot of group work and collaboration. And I, I think it's going to be good stuff. I'm looking forward to it. Any, any questions? Mr. Brent, the textbooks, I know the uh, members of the curriculum committee were able to review those last week and already saw them. But for any other board member that would like to uh, peruse those, please feel free. So if you just want to put them in the corner and Okay, I think, sure, I think I'm going to turn it over to Nancy Burford next. Good evening. I thought uh, it might be easiest to explain what we're doing in the Family and Consumer Science Department by giving you this handout that explains a little bit about some of the transition we're making. Um, so in our department, we decided that we needed to pick the pathway of human service, hospitality, public administration. And then we, we broke that into three different areas, the arts, hospitality, and child development. Um, within that, on your handout, the courses that are in green are going to be new courses next year. So exploring foods, is actually going to be sort of a merge between basic culinary and the foods one class. And I think probably the foods aspect of in the department will probably phase out and will focus more on sending students to, um, you know, to the Career and Technology Center for the culinary program there. So intro to hospitality um, next year is going to be one of our new courses this course articulates with a course from Community College. Um, so this will be a dual enrollment course. And it pretty much is what the title indicates. Um, gives students an introductory look into the world of hospitality, um, travel, tourism, uh, well, lodging, I guess you could say. It's an overview of, of that industry. And since that's one of the largest growing industries in the world, we felt this was a, a strong pathway to follow. Um, so we'll look at trends in the industry, um, issues, development of tourism, and all that sort of thing. The, the second course is um, customer service, which goes hand in hand with that intro course. So we would you know, encourage students to take the intro to hospitality followed by the customer service. And this will, will be um, learning basic concepts and tools of, of service in the industry, um, looking at the American economy and the role of the service industry. So again, that course will all, is also a course that's offered at community college. So it will be a dual enrollment course as well. So we'll have these two courses that will be both um, dual enrollment. The courses in red that I have on that sheet are, are sort of our, our growth within those areas. And so that's where we're looking to hopefully add on with interior design dimensions of um, travel tourism and then the child development three. So um, I thought maybe that would be the best way to sort of show you what we were aiming to do within the department. So are there any questions about the new course? Okay, on, on a personal note, I thought I'd just take a real minute here to, I think some of you have heard that I am going to be retiring at the end of this year. And so while I was here in front of all of you, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of you for my many years of employment here. It's really been an honor to work in the Trove School District. 
and I appreciate all the support that you've given our department over the years and myself as well. So I just wanted to take that this opportunity to thank you personally. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
uh, mock programming language to make the bounce go. In this particular slide, they are uh, programming the uh, Edison to navigate through a uh, maze. Here they are again. The Edison will follow a flashlight, and here's an example of the block programming language. It's very graphical and a nice start for students to learn coding. The Ozobots, they are tiny. I have one in my hand, but the students love them. They draw it on lines, they can send some color, um, and you can give commands to them also using a block programming language. And here's some sixth grade students from last year who would like to tell you a little bit about Hi, that. I'm Bryn Chen, and this is Emily Sweeney, and we're going to teach you about those blocks. <coughs> we did our names to show you the different patterns, and we also did a Harry Potter one for both. Ozone blocks like to travel around. They have different codes that they follow by columns to do different items. See, this one, it goes red, black, red, and it puts it in the snail mode. But then, when you do blue, green, red, it puts it into a faster mode. And then we talk about those. Uh -huh. So if you do longer lines of each color, you can do, you. it'll change its own color. So it'll go down the snail mode each to, to each color as it goes down the line and you can do swirlies or anything else for to make those a lot work. The one thing I love about those robots is you can kind of get creative and do whatever you want. See I did a flower because I love flowers and I did an American heart while well, Emily did swirls and a heart. But it <laughs> so they have a lot of fun doing this and they graduate from the color codes to the block over the message. Just because I'm curious if we're to. Okay. Thank you. That's just an example of the block over the language. Dash and dot, we have two sets of these uh, in the LES library. It's somewhat of a pilot for elementary. I initially intended them for our little ones. Our older ones, love them, just as well. What's nice is the little ones, uh, there's three different types of programs <coughs> from the company. Wonder Workshop. Um, so the little ones use a program that is developed for uh, their age group. We're using the Kindles uh, to use them. And there's also for our older students a block language of programming language that they can use um, to navigate them and to make them do different things. Um, they are noisy, so I did not bring them. <laughs> they talk all the time. And that's an example of one of our students using them with the Kindles. The other change in our curriculum has been something that Dr. Tepper brought to our attention several years ago. We've been introducing students to various topics related to digital citizenship. We've always taught about information literacy and evaluating sources for credibility and copyright and acknowledging sources, um, but we're also adding in some very important safety issues, uh, as well as issues related to their reputation. So their digital footprint, information that maybe they should not be sharing, that be considered oversharing. We um, just last week were discussing sexting actually, uh, as well as posting and rewriting. And the students really respond very well to this. I think that they see that this is an important topic. It's relevant to them. They have opinions about these topics. Um, and so they've actually been very valuable discussions that we've been having. Uh, we've also been discussing, of course, just internet safety in general and avoiding risk relationships, cyberbullying, hate speech, again, copyright, creative credit, as well as various online communication. One of the nice things about the common sense media is there's lessons, there's videos, and there's an online uh, curriculum that students can use by themselves. So on the left, we have a student we just completed um, a unit on digital safety and what does it mean for digital citizen and each student had a piece of the puzzle and we had put them together and they each had to explain on their part of the puzzle what makes a good digital citizen. On the right, uh, the students are using part of Common Sense Media's digital passport program, which is an online program. A 
Okay, so next we'd like to talk about the physical spaces of the libraries or media centers or library media centers. They're called a number of things. And as we said, one of the things that we're really bringing to the schools are maker spaces in each building. And this is intended to be a space where students, again, can take advantage of what libraries have always meant to be. Places where people can share ideas, create, invent, learn, think, rethink, think again. At the elementary level, we have electronic kits that are very popular, Legos, building sets, marble vases, some art supplies, origami, mungum, and many building items. The comment I want to make about some of our maker spaces is that some of our students who may not be as academically inclined can really flourish uh, using <coughs> maker spaces. Uh, also, during this tutoring time, the robotics are available to them to use as well. And so they are enjoying that. Okay, and I'll speak on behalf of Dana Myers, the junior high librarian now. She's doing some wonderful things with the students at the junior high. One of the things the students are really enjoying are three doodler pens. I'll show you some pictures of those. Um, the pictures on this particular screen on the upper right hand corner, the students designed an image using post-it notes. So it was a take on pixel art, and they had a lot of fun doing that. <coughs> the left hand picture is an example of a student invention. They were to um, determine a problem and come up with a solution. And they were to use connects, uh, little bits, which are electronic building blocks and Legos. And for one example of a solution that the student came up with is um, a device that would keep earbuds from tangling. That's a real problem. <laughs> so we also um, at the junior high have programmable robots, specifically the Lego Mindstorm robots, Mickey Minky kits, which are a lot of fun. You can actually play the piano by tapping bananas or fruit or other items that are uh, that conduct electricity and various other objects such as puzzles, reading, crafts, and art projects. So here's another example actually. The students um, use bristle box, which are sort of like part toothbrush and part cell phone vibration motor. And here's just a really quick video showing the students using that. <laughs> and Dana tells me that the students really explored concepts related to physics when they were talking about this, different parts and how much they weighed and <laughs> how they would move as a result of that. So here are some more pictures. The students really enjoy the 3D pens. And Dana hosts a Friday morning <coughs> program during seminar time when students can come in and, and use these products especially logic puzzles, and here are some new uh, pieces of furniture as well. The senior high, we have little bits as well. And as I said, there are 3D, I'm sorry, there are electronic building blocks. Students can use a combination of motors and uh, buttons and all kinds of different uh, materials to create, for example, um, smart home objects or an alarm that goes off when a door is opened. Really some neat stuff. Making these, um, we use perler beads for our pixel art and various other objects. And here's an example of the students using the little bits. Um, you can't see it very well, but this is actually the Girls Who Code Club. They created dioramas related to the Christmas stories um, from their childhood. And they used the little bits to create motion and lights to tell that story. Here's students using Mickey Mickey. They're actually playing the piano by not touching their computer. And here's just a quick example of some of the transformation the library has undergone. If you would come into the library perhaps four or five years ago, you would have seen the picture on the left with lots and lots of stacks of books, um, a lot of which were outdated. They needed to go. And the picture on the right is what it looks like more recently where it's much more collaborative space. And here's the picture as of a couple days ago, where you can see we actually have a dry erase board that students can use to discuss and plan out. And we also are in the process of getting a laser engraver installed. Um, so this laser engraver, also a cutter, will cut various products such as wood, acrylic, styrene, cardboard, and you can see it also engraves various materials. 
Um, one of the areas that I'm most excited to use this with is the marketing class with Michelle Butler because they're going to be designing products along with Invention Land and using the laser engraver and cutter to create those 3D objects to represent their ideas. It's kind of like Shark Tank, it's amazing. <laughs> and we also will be getting 3D printers in all of the libraries as well. Okay, so finishing up here, um, Google Expeditions has been a wonderful tool that Dr. Pinus has brought to us. I believe you've heard about those before. Students take virtual reality trips in the 360 degree experience. We really take advantage of teachable moments. With that, um, for example, the students in Academic English 2 read a short story about Mount Everest, and they went to Mount Everest. It was fabulous. Here's the junior high, same thing, and sixth graders at Mount View. Um, I think we'll skip this video, but I do want to mention that one of the other resources that we're using is Discovery Education, which is a wonderful, very rich video resource library collection. Again, Dr. Finus has been instrumental in this. And the seventh graders in uh, junior high actually brought their lunches in to the library and had a live chat with an expert. And they also were able to cut to a live feed of the actual polar bear migration. So it was a very fun lunch experience. There were about 70 students who came to that. As I mentioned before, we also have ebooks, audiobooks, um, noodle tools. This is a tool that I brought to the school district a few years ago that students use to really, again, prepare for college, citing sources, taking notes, organizing ideas electronically. And we've always had a number of research databases that we really emphasize as well for students to use for credible sources. Okay, and the very last thing we wanted to mention was the change in the image of the libraries. Some people perhaps have an outdated image of what libraries are. So we want to emphasize that we strive to use the technology. We were the first teachers in the school district to become certified educators from Google. We provide trainings to other teachers on various topics related to Google Drive and other tools, Google Expeditions, as I mentioned, Breakout EDU, which is a lot of fun. That is, uh, I'll talk about that in a second. Again, Discovery Education and other schools that we have as well. We have an online presence. Um, the senior high, as well as um, through social media, as well as the district web page. And we're moving away from this image of being collection warehouses to places where students can gather and work. And that's a quote I took from a librarian that I communicated with at Penn State main campus and talking about the changes to his libraries and seeing how we actually bring that down to the high school level. And as you can see in the picture there, there's a couple of students at the senior high using our dry erase boards map to uh, plan out actually solve a, a math problem. Don't ask me what it is, Mr. Lucasio. Uh, but they were working together on that. And the idea is also that they would be able to perhaps clean out designs for the laser engraver or other uh, aspects of the maker space. And just a really quick video. This is the students who are just about to finish the three. Three. Can you pause it for a second? Sir? They're just about to uh, break open a set of locks on a lock box. It's called Breakout EDU, and it's a really fun play on the popularity of escape rooms, but it applies curricular skills. And so um, I received a grant, and we were able to purchase six of those, and I can lead some teacher trainings on those as well for the teachers to use them in their classrooms. So the kids have a lot of fun. So this is just them finally breaking out. Coming in, one of the students coming into the library. 
Is what, there what's the ones in particular? Junior high. Oh, like the 3D pens? Yeah, example? when they're doing their stuff mm -hmm. uh, on their own. Like, oh, is, like is it a free study period? or what It can be during study halls. It can also be, especially, uh, Dana is trying to work with them mostly during that seminar time. But next year, we understand there's going to be a different schedule in place. So hopefully, from that, um, the junior high's version of Lunch and Learn will right. be a good time for that. But they're also using it within the curriculum. Um, there have been various teachers that Dana has been working with to bring their classes in and actually use it during that class time. So it's not always on their own. I see. But there, it seems like they're coming in on their own. From these, are they coming in on their own? You mean, are they using the pens? By no, themselves? no, not the pens. Just everything in the library, in just in general. Oh, well, the students want to. They do. Yes. They come to the libraries during their study halls. This is where they hang out. You know, if they're on work study, they come three hours early and they sit in the library. They enjoy being there. Um, so they do definitely come on their own. I have, I keep a, a track of the number of students who come to the senior high library every month, and it's in the thousands of students who sign in. Um, not counting the students who come with their classes. Mm -hmm. How is this being integrated in the new block schedule? Have you gone through that period yet? Well, right? one of the things we're going to be using is Lunch and Learn, and there will be an opportunity for students to use, for example, the laser engraver at that time. Um, the library will stay open the entire time during Lunch and Learn. And uh, again, I'm also planning on working with the teachers during class time, and being that we'll have a longer class period, it'll be really nice. So nice for research, nice for the makerspace to be able to get deeper into those things. Thank you. You're welcome. It's exciting. It is. It's really exciting. This is the 21st century stuff. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. Any other questions? You're welcome. I just want to say thank you so much to Mrs. Lambert and uh, Ms. Rebel serving as teacher leaders because they have truly transformed, like what she said, what you would think that the, the libraries were. Um, they've done an awesome job. They've taken every opportunity to become certified, um, as you heard about some of those through Common Sense Media, um, et cetera. And they provide a lot of professional development to our entire staff. So thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, you know what? I, I, I just wanted to thank you guys and make sure you thank all the other teachers. I really appreciate all the hard work you do, and it just makes me so proud that I'm living here in the Trove, Pennsylvania, with my family and my kids and grandkids and that. And, that. and I think when we all go but I got to say a little prayer where we're at. And thank God we're not in. I don't want to make any enemies like you know, go home and something. Yeah, yeah. 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 but I, I, I wasn't going to say dairy. <laughs> But we're really blessed that we have a good Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, that, that was what I wanted to say, too. I, I, I loved your presentation, but I'm sorry it's, it, everyone left beforehand <laughs> because I really wanted to thank them for their hard work. That's all extra work. Those courses are fabulous. They're so exciting. We saw a few of these in our curriculum committee meeting, and the end of it, my response to Mr. Maines was, where do I sign up? Can I, can I start taking these? Because they're fabulous. This is, this is a lot of really hard work, and you're just making this look really good. So I hope you will get that information back to Absolutely. your colleagues. Thank you. Okay, continuing on. Um, next week, we'll be asked to approve three different agreements which you can uh, use uh, back to your file. Uh, one is with the St. Vincent College Agreement for the Graduate Fellows. Uh, another is with Penn State University and our district for practical and student teaching. Uh, the third is to approve the West Wall Intermediate Unit Student Services Interagency Agreement for the next school year. We're also going to be asked to approve a tuition student for next year, Olivia Ray Carlquist from the sixth grade. Uh, she's believe currently in the Lanier Valley School District. The last curriculum committee meeting, the minutes are available. Um, they are they are in attachment as well. And the next curriculum committee meeting is Tuesday, June 19th at 5 30. Thank you, Mr. Cassio. My next uh, next week on the 
agenda, agenda for your approval will be the treasurer's report. There are attachments for that, and also payment will be payment of bills and approve an appointment of the new Act 511 tax collector for Youngstown. Uh, the next finance committee meeting will be Tuesday, May 8th at 5 p.m. here at the CSC. Facilities and operation. Uh, we are going to vote on this. Um, we're going to have a motion and voting on this uh, particular item. If there's any comment that anybody would like to make in the audience uh, prior to this, now's the time that you want to step to the public and make comment. Seeing no one, I will move for adoption of number 180, Commission Advertised for Proof. Replacement bids for senior for the senior high school. Second. We have a motion on the floor and second. Questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. Also on the agenda for your approval next week will be uh, Westmoreland Westmoreland Intermediate Unit Life Skills Lease Agreement. Um, also, to approve the new LES contract modifications. Kirk, you want to speak of any of these um, change orders? Yeah, there's one with Westmoreland Electric, where we added $11,453, uh, which will be change order number 12. And change order number 13 is a deduct of $3,009.88 for R&B mechanical. Uh, obviously, Westmoreland Electric is uh, relates to some electrical changes, modifications to the contract as far as lighting fixtures and locations. And the R&D mechanical relates to some artificial rigors that are from the contract. And Eric, I have a question. Good. And at this, at this time, do we, you have a, a amount or a figure of uh, where, where we stand uh, when it comes to add-ons and deducts? We currently stand about $96,000 in the deduct stage as far as changes. So that's the benefit of the district about $96,000 below. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, also on the agenda for your approval, we request permission to advertise for athletic. Uh, Where we finishing bids for the senior high school? Um, there's also also award bids for 2018-19 school year. And they are listed below with attachments. Um, facilities operation and planning committee meeting minutes on April 5th are attached. Um, we also um, have an attachment for the LES monthly construction report. Our next facilities operation planning committee meeting will be Thursday, May 3rd at uh, the uh, administration building at 3.30. Student activities, recreation, Mrs. Cozzo? Yes, um, this is just a list of the senior nights that are coming up. There's one April 16th um, for boys tennis, April 24th for track down at the stadium, uh, May 12th. The second is boys lacrosse at Rossi Field. May 7th is girls softball at the Grand Sabota Field. May 7th is also boys baseball on the same place, different time. And May 7th also is girls lacrosse at Rossi Field. And I think it's my report, Mr. Hosmer. Thank you, Mr. Question one in the media unit. We ain't so long. Mr. Zorch was speaking about we're going to be an uh, agenda item to uh, award a multi-purpose paper bid to the consortium on about $485,000. Um, and there's a summary of the board meeting minutes from March 27th. That's an attachment. The next meeting is Tuesday, April 24th at 7 p.m. The WIU board room. Thank you, Dr. George. WCTC Joint Operating Committee, Mr. Music. Thank you, Mr. Music. The WCTC 2018 Operating Budget is attached to the uh, agenda. It was attached on um, the 
But if you look at what we paid salaries to do that position back in the day, it clearly was more than that. Now, I can give you those numbers so you can do a comparison um, of what it was and what it is now. I would also say to you, and we can give you a rundown of how PIMS has grown. Um, its initial um, um, intent back in the day, um, you know, 12, 15 years ago, was to start collecting information about each district. And the um, amount of data that has been required through PIMS increases on an annual basis. And so um, what was done by one and a half people, I think it was how many years ago, clearly would probably be even more than that now. But I can give you those numbers from back then because clearly we did it in the house. Um, and that would be a comparison for you, certainly. I would appreciate it, thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely, no problem. I'm sure, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Superintendent's uh, recommendations. Um, first, I'd like um, to um, thank Mrs. Burford for her presentation, and she noted her appreciation um, for being employed by the school district. I was going to note that it's been 19 years that Nancy has been employed by the school district, but next week I would ask the board to vote on the resignation for retirement for Nancy Burford, who referenced Family and Consumer Science, as well as Marsha Petraffa, who wasn't here this evening, but she is a 31-year veteran of the Greater Latrobe School District as an elementary teacher, having worked in all three of our elementary buildings. So both of them are retiring as teachers here at Greater Latrobe. And in addition, we have a JD golf coach who's also resigning from his position um, that we would ask the board to vote on next week. We will also have a name and a salary for a new position, the Student Support Services Coordinator, uh, next week. We'd ask the board to approve the substitute teachers that are listed. Um, there are four listed that have gone through the process and are being asked to be approved um, as substitutes for the 17-18 school year. Um, we would ask the um, board to approve the support personnel appointment of Patricia Stewart as a substitute custodian. And those are the resolutions that we would ask the board to move on next week regarding um, personnel. In addition, as Samantha uh, nicely pointed out, the Junior High Musical um, is this weekend, the Lion King Junior, if you want some entertainment, Friday, Saturday night, as well as Sunday afternoon. <coughs> Mrs. Zoll's house does have some tickets this evening if you have some time to spare. Our National Honor Society induction is Wednesday, April 18th. Um, clearly, it's an invitation, and I think all of you did receive one as board members. Um, if you're interested, and it's in our senior high school auditorium at 730. Breakfast of Champions is Thursday, April 19th. Our senior high concert band program is Thursday, April 26th. It's coming up at 7. And I think everybody has turned in their statements of financial interest, but if not, they are due May 1st to Mrs. Allsells. Um, the meetings in the um, are listed in our um, agenda for um, uh, May, as well as uh, next week's meeting, April 17th. This time I move for adoption of resolution number 181 adjournment. Second. Second. All in favor? 